more on this, Alex Duvall joins us from Boston. He's the executive director of the World Peace Foundation. Alex, thank you very much for joining us. Now, you're an expert on Sudan. Uh, how effective do you think the peace agreement that was signed just a couple of months ago is in terms of ending the conflict? The peace agreement has is, is been only reluctantly signed by President Salva Kiir and his chief rival, Riyad Mashar. And one of the things that this African Union report, which was uh, uh, completed almost a year ago but was kept under wraps for the best part of the year, one of the things that this shows is that both those leaders are responsible for uh, ordering and overseeing gross uh, violations of human rights. And the question now arises, how is the international community, starting with the African Union, going to respect a peace agreement that maintains these leaders in those positions of authority? Uh, fair enough. Okay, which brings me to my point, but do you think the findings of this report, one, can, and two, will be used to bring the warlords in South uh, Sudan uh, to trial for the crimes they've committed? Well, one of the provisions of the peace agreement that was um, signed just a couple of months ago is that there should be a process of judicial accountability. There should be a hybrid court involving judges from South Sudan and from the African Union. Um, the African Union and the parties did not want the International Criminal Court involved, so this was a compromise. Now, what happens if the, the, the train of accountability leads right to the top, as it seems to be inevitable? It really uh, poses the dilemma of uh, a peace agreement among the, the political leaders and the pursuit of justice for the many victims of this conflict. It poses this in a very acute manner. And there's no easy solution to this dilemma. Okay, let's move from accountability to some of the reasons. The, the two-year-old civil war in South Sudan is, is actually a reflection of a deeper tribal conflict between the Nuer and the Dinka, which is part of a more complicated tri uh, tribal violent relations in the country. Do you think that all these ethnicities can live together in the country? I, I actually don't think that the, the, the issue is primarily tribal. I think that the, the leaders have mobilized their, their, their ethnic constituencies in, in a very cynical manner. The, the, the origins of the outbreak of this conflict are, are, are entirely political. It is the competition amongst the political elites for uh, the, the privileges and the wealth that comes with controlling the state. South Sudan is actually very rich. It's an oil-producing state. And the majority of that wealth has flowed directly into the pockets of the political elite. The ordinary people have had very, very little uh, benefit from this um, uh, this inflow of money, uh, but, okay. but based on oil. And, and as the elites fell out over who, how that wealth was to be divided, they turned to violence and they turned to mobilizing their... Okay, estate. got it. Alex DeWall, uh, thank you for that great analysis.